to begin the message this evening, can we turn to Joshua chapter 22? That's Joshua chapter 22. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have kept all that Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, and have listened to my voice in all that I command you. You have not left your brethren these many days to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of Yahweh your Elohim. And now Yahweh your Elohim has given rest unto your brethren as he spoke to them. Therefore now turn and go to your tents to the land of your possession which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave you beyond the Jordan. Only take heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded you, to love Yahweh your Elohim and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Yahshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. Now to the one half tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given inheritance in Bashan, but the other half gave Yahshua among their brethren beyond the Jordan westward. Moreover, when Yahshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, Return with much wealth to your tents and with very much cattle, with silver and with gold and with bronze and with iron, and very much raiment. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. And the children of Reuben and the, and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the land of Gilead, to the land of their possession, in which they have possession, according to the commandment of Yahweh by Moses. And when they came to the region about the Jordan, that is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by the Jordan, a great altar to look upon. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar opposite the land of Canaan in the region about the Jordan, on the side that pertains to the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up against them to war. And the children of Israel sent to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and to the half tribe of Manasseh, and to the land of Gilead, Phinehas the son of Eleazar, the priest, and with him ten princes, one prince of a father's house for each of the ten tribes of Israel, and there were every one of them head of their father's houses among the thousands of Israel. And they came to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, and to the land of Gilead. And they spoke with them, saying, In this manner says the whole congregation of Yahweh, What trespass is this that you have committed against the Elohim of Israel, to turn away this day from following Yahweh, and that you have built an altar to rebel this day against Yahweh? Is the iniquity of Peor too little for us, from which we have not cleansed ourselves to this day? although there came a plague upon the congregation of Yahweh, that you must turn away this day from following Yahweh. And it will be, seeing you rebel today against Yahweh, that tomorrow he will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. If the land of your possession is unclean, then pass over to the land of the possession of Yahweh, in which Yahweh's tabernacle dwells, and take possession among us. But do not rebel against Yahweh, nor rebel against us, in building yourselves an altar besides the altar of Yahweh Elohim. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass and a devoted thing? And wrath fell upon all the congregation of Israel, and that man perished not alone in his iniquity? Then the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh answered and spoke to the heads of the thousand of Israel. The mighty one, El Yahweh, the mighty one, El Yahweh, he knows, and Israel shall know, if it is in rebellion or if it is in trespass against Yahweh. Save us not this day that we have built an altar to turn away from following Yahweh, or if to offer a burnt offering or a meal offering, or if to offer a sacrifice of peace offerings on it, let Yahweh himself require it. And if we have not rather out of carefulness done this, and a purpose saying, in time to come, your children might speak to our children, saying, what have you to do with Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel? For Yahweh has made the Jordan a border between us and you, your children of Reuben and children of Gab. You have no portion in Yahweh, so might your children make our children cease from fearing Yahweh. Therefore we said, let us now prepare to build an altar, not for burnt offering nor for sacrifice, that it shall be a witness between us and you, and between our generations after us, that we may do the service of Yahweh before him with our burnt offering and with our sacrifice and with our peace offerings. 
and that your children may not say to our children in time to come, you have no portion in Yahweh. Therefore we said, it shall be, when they say to us, or to our generation in time to come, that we shall say, behold the pattern of the altar of Yahweh, which our fathers made, not for burnt offering nor for sacrifice, but it is a witness between us and you. Far be it from us that we should rebel against Yahweh and turn away this day from following Yahweh, to build an altar for burnt offering, for meal offering, or for sacrifice, besides the altar of Yahweh Elohim, that is before his tabernacle. And when Phineas the priest and the prince of the congregation, even the heads of the thousand of Israel that were with, were with him, heard the words that the children of Gad, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them well. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar the priest, said to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, to the children of Manasseh, Today we know that Yahweh is among us, because you have not com committed this trespass against Yahweh. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of Yahweh. And the Phineas, the, the son of Eleazar the priest, and the princes that returned from the children of Reuben, from the children of Gad, and out of the land of Gilead, to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought them word again. And the thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed them, and spoke no more of going up against them to war, but destroyed the land with the children of Reuben, the children of Gad dwelt. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called out, called the altar Ed, for they said, It is a witness between us that Yahweh is Elohim. We see here a pattern that is one of unity, which the children of Israel were concerned about those who were having an opposing altar in rebellion against Almighty Yahweh. We see then in time past that there are those who have gone out from the assemblies of Yahweh and they have established their own worship opposite the assemblies of Yahweh, but they have compromised and Yahweh's word. There are other groups throughout the world. They've tried to mimic the assemblies of Yahweh. But I remember in time, Pastor Elder Meyer said that if they were really concerned about unity, they would be with the assemblies of Yahweh. They would be with us as one unified body. But as it, as it happens, they have certain doctrines that they don't want to take correction on, so therefore they decide to remain separate from the assemblies of Yahweh. But a true spiritual Israelite is one that believes in unity, it's working as one. Just we see that they were concerned about the rebellion. We see that in Israel, when they went out of Egypt, we see back in Exodus 13, verses 17 and 18, that the pattern was there for, for unity. Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that Elohim led them not by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For Elohim said, lest perhaps the people will repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But Elohim led the people around by the way of the wilderness, by the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up armed out of the land of Egypt. Yes, they went out organized as one. They didn't, it was not helter-skelter. No, they were organized, just like Yahweh's true worship is organized. It's not haphazard, it's not people doing their own thing within the assemblies of Yahweh, but we're working as one. Well, we all have an obligation to remain one, to build the body of the Messiah. The title of this message this evening is a unified body. Well... What is one of our first obligations so that we can learn about being that unified body? When we go to Deuteronomy 5 and verse 1. And it says, And Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the ordinances which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and observe to do them. Well, what do we see here, first of all? Hearing. You've got to be receptive to the word of Yahweh. A spiritual Israelite is, is attuned to hearing the word. And then you listen as it's being spoken. And then the next step is then you learn them. And then the, the final step is you observe to do them. So there's an application of the word after we learn them. If, 
if you're going to allow Yahweh's Holy Spirit to do the work in your life, then you have to learn them, but you also have to apply the word that you've been given. We see that same obligation in Deuteronomy 6 and verse 2. In Deuteronomy 6, excuse me, begin with verse 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is Elohim, Yahweh is one. And you shall love Yahweh Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day should be upon your heart. Yes, you have to make the effort to implant the word of Yahweh in your heart so that the Holy Spirit can do its part to bring to our remembrance what's written in the word. When we make the effort to apply the word of Yahweh to our life, then we will understand what it means to be in unity with each other because we know that there's a, there's a spiritual law in place in the Torah that deals with, with unity of purpose. Just like you, we read in Yahshua chapter 22, they understood the, the concept of unity. Yahshua understood as well that if the word of Yahweh is, is going to work in our hearts, we must learn it. That's what we'll bring to our remembrance. In John 14 verses 25 and 26, says, these things have I spoken to you while yet remaining with you, but the Comforter, even the Holy Spirit, which the Father will send in my name, it shall teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. That's how you're going to apply the word of Yahweh so that you can be a part of the, the body and that you'll do your part to build up the assembly of Yahweh as a unified body, because when you're applying the spiritual applications of the, of the Torah especially, and then when you have the book of Proverbs as well that applies to social situations, that you know how to handle life situations when it comes to human relations with people on the outside and within the inside, the, the assembly of Yahweh, because when you're applying those, the principles in your life, then there will be peace as each one is applying those principles of the kingdom way of life. Remember one of Elder Meyer's comments in one of his articles, he, he said, we must prepare ourselves to live in Yahweh's heavenly kingdom. And that preparation must begin during our human lives as we learn the life-giving principles of Yahweh's government through keeping his laws. It's within Yahweh's government that deals with the, the the aspect of unity, of getting, of getting along. In Psalm 133, you're familiar with that? Many are familiar with Psalm 133. I love Psalm 133 because it's always a reminder of us doing our part. But we do our part by following Yahweh's word, by following those in leadership positions. Psalm 133, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head that ran down upon the beard of even Aaron's beard that came down upon the skirt of his garments, like the dew of Hermon that comes down upon the mountains of Zion. For there Yahweh commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Yes, Aaron was obligated to teach the word of Yahweh. Unity flowed through, Aaron, through the high priest from Yahweh, Yahshua, and on down, and even in today, we see that that same application in Hebrews 13 and verse 7. Hebrews 13 and verse 7. It says, Remember them that have the rule over you, men that spoke you the word of Yahweh, and considering the issue of their life, imitate their faith. So, they're also following the same pattern as Aaron did. They're speaking the word of, of Yahweh. And we must consider the issue, to, the issue of their life to imitate the faith of our leaders. For they are ones who are also teaching unity of purpose. Unity of one. How many times are you reminded by our leadership regarding Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9? which is our obligation day by day, especially in the Sabbath, to remember 
It's, it's one of walking in one with our Heavenly Father Yahweh. Well, if the, word, if the Holy Spirit is working and we're applying the word, then we see the, the application in, in Isaiah chapter 32, verses 16 and 17. Isaiah chapter 32, verses 16 and 17. Then justice shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness shall remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and confidence forever. So, if righteousness is working within our lives, if we're applying the word of Yahweh, and it says the work of righteousness shall be peace, in the effect of righteousness, quietness, and confidence forever. So there's going to be that peace within our midst with each other and, and as we communicate to each other, as we deal with each other. We, we are, are going to allow Yahweh's Holy Spirit to work in our lives to establish peace because we keep Yahweh's word. Righteousness, we know, it means the keeping of Yahweh's commandments. And then the effect of that righteousness will come about quietness and confidence forever. If we're applying the word of Yahweh, we see that rule and, and effect of in human relations in Leviticus chapter 19, in verses 16 to 18. Leviticus chapter 19, verses 16 to 18. You shall not go up and down as a talebearer among your people, neither shall you stand against the blood of your neighbor. I am Yahweh. You know, we don't traffic like they do today in the media. They're trafficking any and every kind of story, whether it's true or not. You know, it's, it's, we don't operate like that in the assemblies of Yahweh, whispering about going up and down. He says, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. Yeah, there can't be hatred toward your brother if we are applying the spiritual application of Yahweh's law. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. Again, it's the rule of, of peace. A peaceful environment shows how you can establish that. You cannot have any hate. You can't take, you can't take vengeance. You can't bear any grudges but you have to love your neighbor as yourself. If you're bearing a, gr a grudge from day to day or from year to year, there can't be any spiritual growth. If you're, if you're bearing grudges from year to year, taking the, the Passover will be sort of a, a thing of vanity because there's no progress being made because you're still harboring an attitude toward a, either a fellow brother or sister in the faith or towards those on the outside. But the law of Yahweh dictates how we shall uh, conduct our lives. In Psalm 119 and verse 11, again, the principles there is that what's gonna allow us not to, to fall into the, the trap of, of sin. Psalm 119 verse 11, your word have I laid up in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Yes, we have to have the word of Yahweh laid up in our heart. Again, the Holy Spirit will do its work to bring to remembrance how we shall conduct ourselves if we are allowing the word of Yahweh to work in our lives as we see in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband to them, says Yahweh. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts, and in their heart will I write it, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people." And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin will I remember no more. Yes, but as he says, 
But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts, and in their heart will I write it. And I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Yes, it will be written in our hearts if we are applying Yahweh's word in our lives and allowing Yahweh's Holy Spirit to work. If we're going to have unity, a unified body, then who do we imitate? Well, one of the, an the answers is given in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Be you therefore imitators of Yahweh as beloved children, and walk in love, even as the Messiah also loved you, and gave himself for, up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to Yahweh for an odor and a sweet smell. Yes, we have to imitate Yahweh. Well, how do we, imit how do we imitate Yahweh? Well, the answer is given to us in Leviticus chapter 19 in verses 1 and 2. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am holy. Now, what does he mean by that, though? Well, Peter gives us the answer. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. First Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. But like as he who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy in all manner of living, because it is written, you should be holy, for I am holy. The key is in all manner of living. That's how we imitate Yahweh, by keeping his word. Well, how, how else? First Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 25. For to this were you called, because Messiah also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bore our sins in his body upon the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live to righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls." Yes, Yahshua the Messiah, he was always at one with Yahweh, always keeping Yahweh's will and, and doing what Yahweh spoke to him to do, as, as he said in John 6, 38, for I am come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So Yahshua was in com complete submission to, our, to Almighty Yahweh, just as we, if we are going to follow that example, let us not forget Luke 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is perfected shall be as his teacher. That's what keeps the body unified, by following, imitating Yahweh, following the example of Yahshua. As they worked as one, we work at, at, as one with Yahweh and Yahshua. And that by doing that, we allow that, that spirit of unity to do its work so that we will also will be at peace with each other at all times. As we see that working in, in Ephesians chapter 4, in verses 1 to 6, which speaks of that, the spirit of unity. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. I therefore, the prisoner in Yahweh, beseech you that you walk worthily of the calling in which you were called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Yes, we have to be forbearing people with each other. Giving diligence to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Where, there it is. Giving diligence, that means it's constant. To keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of, of peace. Shalom. There is one body, 
and one spirit, even as you were also called on one hope of your calling, one master, one faith, one baptism, one L and father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Well, it should not be our desire to, to leave the body of Messiah to go to others because they're not in, in, in sound doctrine as the Assemblies of Yahweh is. We have to remain in that, the body of the Messiah and further unify this body and work, work to make everything work as it should as a, in a peaceful atmosphere. As it says, there is one body, one spirit. Outside the Assemblies of Yahweh, you're not in, in, in one spirit if you're leaving this, this organization. We see in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 33, Yahweh's character, which should be our character. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 33. It says, for Yahweh is not an Elohim of confusion, but of peace. Yes. And we should be, have the same attitude in imitating our Heavenly Father Yahweh, building peace among ourselves at all times. That, that's what helps a unified body to be strong. Well, what is confusion? Well, we go to Proverbs chapter 6 and verses 16 to 19. It's the opposite effect of, of peace, of unity. Proverbs chapter 6 verses 16 to 19. There are six things which Yahweh hates, yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, someone who's arrogant, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that devises wicked purposes. Feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness that others lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. Yes, that's what causes confusion those that, that cause the discord, that break that, that peaceable bond that is supposed to exist between us as spiritual uh, Israelites, as Israel. We see that in Galatians chapter 5, in verses 13 to 15. The two opposites, the contrast there. For you, brethren, were called for freedom. Only use, only use not your freedom for an occasion to the flesh, but through love be servants one to another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed one another. But, well, that's what breaks down uh, unity. Uh, bickering, arguing, um, not beginning, not settling differences of of opinion or differences that exist, but the end result is it says here, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one another. Yes, you're a argument that's not resolved, it will eventually consume uh, those who have not resolved the issue be between them. And, but Yahshua gave the key to how to resolve this, Matthew chapter 18. Verses 15 to 17. And if your brother sins against you, show him his fault between you and him alone. And if he hears you, you have gained your brother. So there, there's three steps there. Really, it, if you're functioning as a spiritual Israelite, you won't go past it the first level because you've resolved it at the first level. It says, if your brother sins against you, go show him his fault between you and him alone. And if he hears you, you have gained your brother. So the word of Yahweh gives us that, that ability because if we are replying in the word of Yahweh in our lives, we have the ability to solve the problem at the first level. We don't need to go beyond that because if we're applying Yahweh's word, we'll establish a peace at the first level. But if it can't be resolved there, then we know that it goes to the second level. But if he does not hear you, take with you one or two more, that at the mouth of two witnesses or three, every word may be established. Well, okay, now if it's gotten to that point, then yes, one or two more. Go and, and hear, the, 
hear the, the issue of what's going on. But note, back in, in, in step one, if the issue's been resolved, it need not be spread all over the, uh, the Assemblies of Yahweh, you know, and, and, and as a gossip, because it should die right there. You resolve the problem between you and your brother, and that's it. Same in step two. If it's resolved at the second level, again, it need not be whispered all over the camp, whispered all over the Assemblies of Yahweh. But if it can't be resolved, then we know that it goes to the third level. And if he refuses to hear them, tell her to the assembly. And if he refuses to hear the assembly, let him be to you as a Gentile and a publican. Well, if it can't be resolved at the first or second level, then it's, it's going to come before the administration, and then they will have to be involved. So if there's really a wrong, wrongdoing that's been done, then they will have to issue a, a decision based upon the word of Yahweh. But really, it should not go beyond the first level. If we're applying the spiritual principles of Yahweh's Torah and not allowing any uh, grudges or issues to remain unresolved. As we see this in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. It says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go to t down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Okay, emotions may, may run wild between two people. But it says, sin not. Don't let the avenue of sin enter the picture. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means within, before the next day, resolve to solve the issue between you and your brother in the faith. Neither give place to the devil. Don't, don't allow Satan the devil to get a place in that situation because he will take advantage of it. So we have to do our best to resolve any differences so that we can maintain that unity of the body. Well, we, we see, as we heard tonight, John 13, verses 34 to 35. John 13, verses 34 to 35. It says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Well, it won't take long for a visitor or someone coming in to our midst to notice if there's a problem between certain people as they will, you know, they're going to be observing the brethren, see how we conduct ourselves with each other, and they're going to draw a conclusion based upon what they see. But as Joshua said, you know, if, we, if we're following those principles in Yahweh's word of love, then they'll know that we are his disciples because they'll know if that love exists. So we, we have to apply Yahweh's word, allow Yahweh's Holy Spirit to work on our lives, to, to have that unified body. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 6 to 8, we should be preparing ourselves while we're here in, in this human life. Are we preparing for the kingdom of Yahweh? And as I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as a voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for Yahweh Elohim, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be very glad, and let us give the glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And it was given to her that she should array herself in fine linen, bright and pure, for fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Well, we know righteousness is keeping Yahweh's commandment. Are we cleaning up our lives, preparing ourselves for the Lamb? It says his, and his wife made herself ready. Are we making ourselves ready? That should be our goal, is making ourselves ready to be acceptable to, to Yahshua, to do nothing that separates us from Yahweh, and let's stay a unified body. When we live the kingdom life in our personal lives, then we'll see that unity at work. 
And let us not forget in the final scripture here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 12 and 13. It says, But we entreat you, brethren, to know them that labor among you and are over you in Yahweh and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. There it is. It's be at peace. Shalom. Remember those, just like in, we read in Psalm 133. Yahweh charged Aaron to lead and guide his people. And he guided his, his people with his Torah law, and that establishes, established peace when they were following Yahweh's covenant, his Torah. So we have, today we have the administration who's also standing in that place under Yahshua, as Yahshua has appointed them. And they also are laboring hard to help keep us on the track, just like a referee in a game. And so we are to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Look at the Assemblies of Yahweh, the growth that's going on today. Look at the shortwave, look at literature, the outreach. I mean, it's, they're doing a lot of work. And so we should esteem them very highly in love for their, what they're doing and be at peace among ourselves. So let us work, each and every one of us, to help keep the, a unified body. I'd like to ask if the, the moderator come forward in closing prayer.